What's up everybody, it's your boy Nate. This brand new AI tool is completely free and completely destroys Photoshop and just about any image generation software out there today. Let's try this. Make this photo in color. And in 5.7 seconds, this is what it came up with. This looks awesome. Let's try another one. Let's change this tiger into a dog. Wow, okay, that one came out really great. Okay, last one, let's change the hat on this person into a sombrero. Okay, yeah, this is pretty cool. So I think you guys are gonna have a whole lot of fun with this brand new AI tool. What's crazy is, is that not only does it run incredibly fast, but is probably the easiest thing to use. So today we're gonna be diving into where it really shines. Also going over the caveats, that way you guys get a better understanding as to whether or not this is gonna be useful to you and your creative work. Anyways, I'm super excited. I know you are too. All right, let's go. Google's AI Studio is incredibly powerful and runs incredibly fast. It's unlike any of the previous AI image editing software before. And I've been just throwing a bunch of scenarios at it. Not only can you edit pictures by just typing in a simple prompt, but you can do a whole lot more crazy stuff. And it's really mind blowing just how powerful this is. We're not gonna be cherry picking any results and we're gonna be showcasing this in real time so you could just see how fast and how powerful this is. So this is AI Studio and it's running the brand new Gemini 2.0 Flash, which includes image generation and image editing features. So one thing that I wanna show you guys really quickly is that I was able to upload in this photo which we generated using Flux and Comfy UI and I said change the outfits to be a business casual outfit and you can already see the results look pretty impressive it exactly follows the prompt and we went ahead and made sure that it changed not just my outfit but also Chriselle's outfit as well and it did it seamlessly all in a few seconds. Not only that, but I also uploaded this uh, rotating GIF of Goku, which we generated using WAN 2.1, which is a free and open source AI video generation tool. But one of the things that you might notice is that it looks very quirky on some of its backgrounds while it's rotating around. But either way, I just told it, make this character black. And bam, we have a version of this where Goku is actually black. So that, that's pretty cool. Another thing that I tried doing really quickly from its examples is that they have this image of croissants and it says add some chocolate drizzle to the croissants and bam, it did it pretty well. But these were some of the quick early tests and I want to show you some more things that I've really dove into and some use cases that probably will resonate a little bit more with you and what you're doing with your creative work. So over here, I have an example image which is a line art drawing of Albert Einstein. And just to show you how easy this is, we can go ahead, copy this image, and then going over to aistudio.google.com, we can go over to the prompting section. I'm gonna go ahead and hit Control V to paste it in there. And let's try something out by telling it to color in this image. So here we're typing color this picture, and then we can click run and give it a few seconds. And the reason why I wanted to showcase this example is because let's say you're working with the 2D drawings that you've maybe drawn before, sketched out, and maybe you would have taken this 2D drawing and put it into something like Photoshop and manually colored every single pixel in here, making those decisions yourself. Well, let's go ahead and see what Gemini popped out. And you can see here, it took only 7.1 seconds and it went ahead and colored in the image. Now, I would say some of the coloring does not look perfect, but it was pretty awesome for just seven seconds. So let's go ahead and tell it to refine this coloring a little bit better to make it more realistic. So here, we're just gonna tell it, make this coloring more realistic. What's awesome about this is that we're just using natural language to prompt it so we don't have to be super specific. There's no extra coding involved. And now we can start to see that it has done some shading to the drawing, but I'm not really liking how red that tongue came out. So let's go ahead and try changing just a specific part of the image. Tongue, pink colored. And then we're gonna go ahead and hit run again. And what's really cool is that you can just see how quickly it's working, just a few seconds. And now it has made it super pink, but I don't really like this at all. So I'm gonna say, make the tongue coloring better and more realistic. Then we're gonna hit run one more time. And you can see what's really cool about this is that we're able to iterate through a process with a picture and the drawing. So let's go ahead and say that we have a colored in image and we wanna make this now into a 3D model. 
You can just type in make this a 3D render. And then let's go ahead and click run on this. And bam, all right, this is pretty cool. So now we have Albert Einstein, which looks like it was rendered in 3D. Now I wanna show you another example where I had it earlier where I said color this drawing, it generated this picture. And then afterwards I told it make it more realistic and it came up with this version. And then at the very end, we said make it a 3D render and it came out with this one. So you're not gonna get the same results every single time. So that's also why I wanted to show you this is because this is AI image generation. And so whenever you're editing something and you're not liking a result that you're working with, you can actually just try and open up a brand new window and it's gonna be able to do an entirely different variation whenever you're working with this. Okay, so let's go ahead and try out something else. So here we have a picture of a fox wearing some hype beast clothes, and this one I used a lot for one 2.1 for making a lot of cool videos. But let's say I wanted to change the outfit of this character. So I'm just gonna drag and drop it right here into the prompting section. And I'm gonna type in, change this outfit to be purple and business formal. So here, I'm gonna expect to see this fox now in something like a purple suit or maybe even a button down. Okay, cool, so awesome. Here we have now the same fox character, right? So here it is as its before picture. And now for the after photo, it has changed the fox in just about a little under seven seconds to now being wearing a formal attire, but he does look a little bit chonkier. Let's go ahead and try another example now. So here I have another picture that was generated using Flux and one of our Comfy UI workflows where it has me on a King of Hearts playing card. And I want to drop this into Gemini and ask it to change the suit of the card. And instead of being a King of Hearts, let's make it a Jack of Spades. Make this card a Jack of Spades. So this one is actually taking longer than any of the earlier generations where it would have taken only about seven seconds. And here we have it changed, but as you guys can tell, this is a clubs instead of a spades. So let's try and make it change now the clubs to spades again. Awesome, okay, so this is pretty cool. So it added a bunch of spades. It wasn't as clean and seamless as some of the other generations, but either way, I gotta say, this is pretty impressive because we went from this image to this one down below in just a matter of seconds. Whereas even just doing something remotely similar in Photoshop would take you much longer, but it would probably come out much more perfect. Here I have a sci-fi photo of Chriselle and I holding these space weapons while also wearing these mech suits on an alien planet. And let's say we wanted to just change a little quality about these. So I wonder, can I add in some sort of sci-fi building structures in the background? So let's go ahead and try doing that. Now, this one I would imagine would be a little bit difficult because we have multiple characters and we're asking it to not just make a sci-fi building, but actually composite it to where it looks like it's in the background of this photo. So it would have to cut out certain elements. Oh shoot, okay, it's actually already done. Wow, so in about 15 seconds, we were able to add in a sci-fi building in the background. So here I wanna be able to add in now an alien creature with scales and a lizard-like appearance in the foreground. So let's see if it handles this just as well as it did its 3D structure in the background. All right, this is uh, kind of interesting. What's strange is that it is uh, blurred, but that's probably because of its foreground being just out of focus. Let's try to make it match the entire vibe of the space. So make the creature in focus and purple. Okay, cool. So it has now made the creature purple, but it is not in focus. And one thing that you might notice when you're working with this is that the more changes that you're making to an image is the more degraded its quality is getting every single time. So it's almost like uploading an image to YouTube and it just constantly losing its quality because of the compression. But let's go back to an earlier point. What's really cool is that we can take this edit feature, which you can see here. And let's just go ahead and reprompt it to something else. So here I'm gonna ask it to give me a sword. All right, cool. So here we have been able to add in a large sword to this and wow, that looks pretty good. So again, from this earlier image where we just have us wearing these mech suits, these space guns on this planet to now having this in the background and even going as far as changing what I'm holding in the photo. 
Now, again, though, the quality of this is a little bit lower resolution than what we originally had, but with just some simple compositing, I'm pretty sure that we can make this look much better. All right, for one of the final tests now, here is a last image that was generated using Flux and one of our Comfy UI workflows where it has Chriselle and I in Squid Games. So you see I'm wearing four, five, six as my number. Chriselle has 67. And here I'm just going to go ahead and create a brand new prompt. We're going to drag in this picture. And let's go ahead and ask it to change the numbers on the clothing. Now this should be pretty difficult because the clothing has all these different natural ripples and we have multiple characters. So let's see, I asked it to change the numbers on the clothing to 99. I didn't really specify too much as to which part or which person, but let's see how it came out. Oh, wow, this is pretty good. So in just a few seconds, 9.4 seconds, it was able to change those numbers on the clothing. Now again, it is extra compressed, so you can see probably my face features are looking extra botched and it does not look like the original photo that we sent it. But I think that's actually probably because this photo is a very large file size. So if I was to even inspect this image, I think the file alone is like over six megabytes. It just has so much data in it. It's an almost 2000 uh, by 1500 or so pixeled photo. So I'm curious if just working with an already compressed image might work a little bit better so that Google doesn't have to compress the picture on its own end before it edits it. So that might be something for you guys to keep in mind when you're working with this tool. One last thing before we go, make the man wear pink shorts and a blue tank top. Okay, wow, this is pretty impressive. So I was just kind of joking around here. So yeah, I'm sure you guys are going to have a whole lot of fun playing around with this tool, making all sorts of crazy stuff. If you guys make something really awesome, go ahead, share it to us on Discord. This is something made by Kendu on Discord. I'm sorry if I'm butchering your name. But anyways, I love your work. It, this, this thing came out super awesome. And here we also have one from Penny. And yeah, these were super, super cool. So yeah, if you guys go ahead, make some cool stuff, send it to us on Discord. I always love checking it out. And if you guys are curious to generate photos of yourself or even videos, make sure you go ahead and check out our Patreon, which has a whole bunch of free resources and guides and check out some of our earlier videos, which we cover things like WAN 2.1. We talk about Flux. We have a lot of awesome and easy to follow guides and all those links are going to be down in that description box. Anyways, thanks for watching. I hope to catch you in the next one. Until next time. All right. Peace.